We work in countries that are affected by conflict. And so a big area of work, of course, is the Middle East at this moment. So we work in Lebanon, we work in occupied Palestinian territories, we work in Syria, in, uh, in Jordan. Then we work in Africa, we have programs in the south of Sudan, also programs in Uganda, we work in Congo, DRC, we work in Burundi, we have a program in Colombia, and we have a long-term program in Sri Lanka. So there's very different situations, but basically what children have been through, the traumatizing events, so to speak, are very similar. They've seen uh, their parents being killed, they've seen family members being abused, and those those children are affected. Warchild is developing uh, a set of interventions that together form a system of care. Uh, the idea being that not, a, not one single intervention can, can cater for the needs that children have. So we will need to combine a set of, of interventions. And we do that in a way by combining interventions that support children's psychosocial well-being, their child protection, as well as within the education sector. The key intervention is what we do with children, which we call ideals. So I deal with my problems. But of course, it's not enough to work with children because they go to schools and the teachers may have seen the same conflict. So we also have teacher deals. We work with teachers. We also know that if the child sort of recovers in our interventions and goes back home and the parents are traumatized, it might still go under a lot of pressure and stress at home. So we also work with parents. We work with the peers or the friends of the, of the children. We work with the, the state system, the healthcare system. So there are different ways of, of interventions at the child level, at the, at the immediate surroundings and at the, at the country or state level. And then once we start with children, basically it starts with play. Now, of course, what we do is not just play, because we understand for most of these children, as they have been on the run for a long time, as they've been in different situations, they have lost their respect for rules, they've, they've lost their respect for each other, and they've lost trust. And so what we do is the game is actually with rules, different games, different play, so making a lot of noise, then getting quiet again, so that children start understanding rules again. Children are always looking for structure. So all these things actually help in children rebuilding their trust in each other, in gaining confidence in themselves, and actually in their ability to speak up, but also to listen and, and work together. The problem with violence is often has, a, especially with long-term violence, like civil wars or, or community violence, it breaks down the moral fabric of, of communities, which then results in distrust between people. So by getting children, but also caregivers or adults, to come together, you give them the opportunity to first of all overcome certain negative um, beliefs, but you also give them the opportunity to understand their own thoughts. And what we do is offer a specific skill set to deal with that. An important element of our programs is inclusion. Wherever in, in, uh, in, in you work in societies, you find people excluded. Of course, the first one you would recognize is children with a handicap who can't participate in the game, so we need to make sure that, that they can. But very often it is also because they come from another ethnic background or they have speak another language. And also with children that have been part of the conflict. If, if for example, in North Uganda, Children were abducted by the LRA in the north of the country, and when they were abducted, everyone knows that these children from 8, 9, 10, 11 years old had to kill each other, had to kill their parents to be able to be part of the gang. Now, they didn't want to be part of the gang, but they had to, otherwise they would have been killed themselves. If these children, when they get older, return to their villages, they're stigmatized for their life. So our intervention to reduce stigma will be a combination of targeting children that hold negative beliefs, but also important people around the children. So this could be community members or teachers or facilitators of our interventions. And the way we do that is first analyzing why they hold the negative attitudes and how they manifest, and then to see what we can do about changing those negative attitudes, either by giving information and increasing their awareness or about bringing them in contact with children that have been stigmatized.
It really boils down, I think, to a very simple concept. If, if, if you have a friend from, uh, and that you've learned to, to become friends through an intervention such as the DEALS intervention of War Child, if you can then create a friendship of so-called uh, somebody from the opposing uh, group, whatever that may be, that friendship uh, is probably an important aspect of trying to break those, uh, uh, those perpetual cycles of negative attitudes. Two years ago, when the refugees were coming into Europe, as we have all seen, millions into Europe, they were also arriving in Holland. And our staff was seeing what was happening and also understanding there's resistance from communities. There are schools and asylum seeker centers where they're received, but there were so many that we were pretty sure that a lot of the frontline workers in Holland wouldn't know what to do, because in Holland you're trained to educate children, but you're not trained to educate children with an a conflict background or a war background. So you wouldn't be able to recognize the behaviors of these children. So we thought we should do something about this. And we call it the Team Up program, where we work with children in every ASLM Seeker Center in the Netherlands and see how they could get structure and how they could get psychosocial support, not only uh, with what they've seen in their conflict, but also in the journey to the Netherlands and then in the end arriving in a country where they weren't welcome. As we are working with children, that our interventions need to be evidence-based. You cannot play with children uh, without knowing what you're doing, because you could cause them harm. So we say we need to do research to make sure that what we do actually makes a positive difference in the lives of children, and that should be based on scientific research. Research is a very important part to, to first of all, identify and demonstrate that what we're doing works. And the second piece is to be able to always continue fine-tuning and developing and improving our offer uh, of, of, of interventions and activities. At this moment we reach about 350,000 children on a global level, which you could say is a lot. And we are very much focused in growing and trying to reach 500,000 and maybe a million. But there are 250 million children living in countries by conflicts. If we can actually contribute to that and actually demonstrate that the war child intervention is proven to work, then these are interventions that can be also used by other uh, organizations in the field as an evidence-based practice to be implemented at scale. It should be the most obvious thing for countries but also for the international community to give the attention and the resources to support and care for children that have been affected by armed conflict in the best possible way.